Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing our WWE Week in Review. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we're under the impression that SmackDown and Raw just switched places. At least the writers went to Raw. Yeah, because... Uh, or SmackDown writers went to Raw, I should say. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> Raw wasn't particularly entertaining. No, it was not it was very good. not great. Actually, there was a couple of good points, well, but... See, my biggest problem with Raw was that no matches really had any stakes, and most of the matches were not competitive. Well, yeah, that's true. It's, it's been doing a lot of squash matches. Like, I feel like the best match on Raw was Bobby Roode and Elias. Which is scary, because yes. that wasn't a good match. And they, no, actually, it was decent. I, I thought actually Bobby actually worked well with him. I don't know, for some reason. Well, Or maybe it was Elias worked well, because usually his matches are very standard well they probably have much more similar styles to each other maybe or they're you know working similarly to each other yeah but i way. guess we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it yeah it's not that far away it's true um but yeah so uh raw opens with a uh, bruno san martino uh tribute yep because he passed away it was last tuesday yeah i was gonna say it was last, wednesday. last week i believe yeah yeah last wednesday i think it was yeah um so they did the the bell tolling yeah. thing, ten ten bell salute. I guess. Yes, um, and then uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar come out. Yeah, and they cut a very long promo about absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's literally what he's been saying for the last oh, yeah. months. Yeah, um, this is Ron Reigns isn't gonna beat Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar can't lose. Blah blah blah. Yeah, um, and then obviously that brings Roman out. Yeah. And then they get face to face, and all of a sudden, just like hear random chants for Roman. Oh yeah, it was weird. They were just so isolated. Yeah. It, so it looked like there was plants in the audience that yeah. were supposed to be cheering for Roman. It was Which, very odd. Yeah, but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, Roman just goes into the ring and says that. Well, yeah, we got some weird camera angles, like from the f- audience. Oh like, yeah. They were just yeah, the cameraman on, was on sta- the specific people. Yeah, yeah. They were standing with, like, right behind the people. People had their cell phones up, yeah. capturing Roman and mm-hmm. Lesnar standing next to each other. Yeah. Um. So, so I mean, are, are you in agreement that Roman is walking out Universal Champion at Well Greatest Royal Rumble from? Well, A, the fact that he didn't win at WrestleMania is mm. a good good starting point. Um, the leaked, or I don't know if it's leaked details, but like the details about uh, Brock Lesnar's supposed contract, mm-hmm. where it's like he makes a ton of money per appearance now. Yes. Um, that could just be Vince trying to keep him on retainer, right? which means that he won't be around, so it would make sense for him yeah, to Yeah, he's pretty much come and go, and then he just yeah. gets paid. Mm-hmm. So instead of instead of having him have the title and needing him to be around more often, you take the title off of him, have him just do special events. Yeah. Like say he comes back just for SummerSlam and WrestleMania mm-hmm. or some something, something like that. Yeah. Um the only reason I or part of the reason I don't want to see Roman win is just cuz then I mean uh then we he'd, Brock would get a rematch and we'd have to see them <clears throat> one more time. Brock didn't <laughs> Brock didn't take uh wait no. Goldberg didn't get a rematch. Oh yeah, last that's time, true. Last All year. right, so I guess so there's a possibility that wouldn't happen. Part timers don't always take the rematch. I guess that's true. You know, Brock Lesnar doesn't really care about the title anyway. We know that. Although Heyman keeps on claiming he does, it's just not true. He know. just cares about money. Anyway, it's better when he's not on the show. Oh, absolutely. It's just such a waste of time. Absolutely. I don't want to see him jump in the ring. Without Pyro, it's, it's just not the same. <laughs> that member Pyro sign was in the audience again. Oh, of course. Yeah. Good um, stuff. Yeah. So uh, up next, we have Elias. Uh, he comes out, tries to sing a song, but mm. is immediately oh, yeah. interrupted by Bobby Roode. That's who it. comes out with his glorious music. Yep. Um, and then uh, apparently they have a match. Yeah. I, like you said, you thought it was good. I thought it was decent. Um, it could have just been me not really caring about Bobby Roode. That's a fair Um And fair Elias, thought. while I like the direction they're going with this character, it's not there yet for me fair enough so i don't really care unless who he's feuding with i care about makes so sense it's a lot it's a lot harder to get into it yeah um but i'm, I'm sure the quality of the match wasn't bad no it wasn't terrible um i don't know i f- found bobby Roode's main roster stuff to be very 
bland and yes plain. well that's that's my that's yeah thing, no right? i know and I, I just thought i thought they worked well together for mm-hmm. for the match um but elias ends up i guess you could say stealing a victory yeah and well he like rude has been on higher on the card for a good majority of his uh main well, roster well, stay because yeah, he was in the u.s title picture mm-hmm. he even won it and yep everything so but yeah, i mean it, it was a, a roll-up victory pretty much so yeah 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 it was like one of those kind of catching off guard yeah they things. chased each other outside the ring and then elias got rude when he came into the ring i guess he smacked his head on the rope and then rolled him up and put his weight on top <laughs> yeah, yeah it kind of looked like he just like accidentally knocked him <clears throat> and fell over yeah pretty much so anyway yep and then uh, we have a promo from Matt and Bray backstage. Uh, apparently they are facing the Ascension tonight, and they say they're going to win the titles at Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah, against the bar. Yes. Um, it, it's always funny the way Matt phrases things, though. Because he said the, uh, I think he called the Ascension, the like the team from the underground. Yeah, or, or like the Badlands, that. Wasteland. right? Wasteland, Wasteland, that's what it is, yes. yes. Because I think that's what they were referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To. Mm-hmm. But when they teamed at Stardust, they were like the Cosmic Wasteland or something like that. Interesting. So, it um, was interesting. Yeah, and then we got that match. Um, I kind of hate Bray and Matt's entrance. Well, because... It, it just doesn't... Like, I no, feel like... Yeah, it doesn't flow at it sh- all. It, it could probably go the other way around and it would work. Yeah. You start with the with the, the Bray, out. Yeah. And then when you get into the ring and they do the delete thing, that mm-hmm. would make a little more sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. that. It, it, it's th- a work in progress. I think the reason why they do it that way is because Matt is the higher, you know what I mean? Higher it's regarded. Matt, it's Matt and, and Bray. Bray. It's yeah. not Bray and Matt. They're not interchangeable. Obviously, Matt is the more over one, so they yep. want to push that more. Yeah. Had I venture a guess. Mm-hmm. And then um, when they hit the twist of fate drop, or like, Bray picked him up on his yeah well he like he like picked up uh like in a wheelbarrow position yeah and Matt it, hit the twist of eight and mm-hmm. they dropped down together I don't, yeah. I don't remember if they called it something but i know, I know it was yeah. not normal um the ascension actually got a little bit of offense in yeah it's a little surprising in all fairness the ascension don't normally get squashed they just they get yeah they they put in some offense but they end up losing well obviously. to be fair they're not on tv to get squashed I anyway guess that's true uh, although the two of them are pretty good workers. That's they, the funny part. Were, are they still the longest NXT reigning tag team champions, or the Authors of Pain probably beat that? Um, no, I don't. I doubt the Authors of Pain yeah. did. Um, I don't know, though. I honestly didn't even know that. that I thought they, they were, happen. like, the longest reigning champions or something like that. I will look into it. Go for it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like I said, the Ascension are good. They just don't have a push. Yeah, I mean, they were doing good work with Breezango. At least it made them... Um, well, it gave them something to do. Yeah, it was, it was entertaining. And yeah. I wouldn't be yeah, surprised see? if they go 344 back. 344 days. Yep, the Ascension. Uh, it's actually 364, but it's recognized as 344. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, because I guess because of tapings and mm-hmm. stuff. Right. The shortest reign is the Wyatt family. Yeah, not a surprise there. Nah. Um, But, yeah. I mean, I, I don't expect them to do anything with the Ascension. Oh, absolutely not. They're, it's unfortunate, but it's just kind of one of those truths that we have to yeah. deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It um, doesn't matter how well you do in NXT. It's not necessarily going to translate well to the main roster. Very but true. they were kind of a ripoff of the LOD. That's kind of what they were going for, and I guess... Well, when they brought them up, they were wearing all, like, the... Like, the armor and the, stuff yeah, like that, the exactly. shoulder pads, yeah. So it was pretty pretty clear what they were going for. Uh-huh. Um up next we have our brand new talk show to re- i guess to replace miss tv and since you know ambrose isn't around no, ambrose no. asylum yeah. yeah so uh it's like the sammy and kevin show because apparently i guess that's what they're going with yeah um anyway their special guest is kurt angle um yeah and then basically it was so weird like they didn't i don't know it was. It, it just like never hit that point that it was meant to hit. You know. You know what they were doing. Hmm. They were trying to do the thing with Shane again, but, but make it so that Sammy and Kevin were actually the bad guys. Hmm. Because obviously that wasn't the case right. with Shane. Oh no. So let's not even talk about that. Yeah. Because it really looked like they were just trying to pick a fight with Kurt Angle for no reason. Yep. Um. They sarcastically praise him and say that he's doing a good job yeah. and stuff like that but he's like i know what you guys are up to uh, angles like i know what you guys are up to so you know yeah. what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put you in a match 
against Braun Strowman and, and Bobby Lashley. Yeah. An interesting pairing. Very. But you um, know, That's get, called we don't know what to do with you two, so we're just going to put you together. But it is also a good way <clears> to... <throat> uh, like, make it seem like you're trying to punish somebody. It's true. Because they are two very big opposing people, mm-hmm. so. And then we, we did learn during this that uh, Shane McMahon will be in the uh, Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah, they, what, they kind of made an announcement? Yeah, they said so? all your all your former adversaries on SmackDown oh, yeah. and along with the rest of the roster is going to want to beat you up and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And it's true. People do like mm-hmm. beating up on uh, and Sammy. They Jay. did make fun of Jason Jordan saying, well, not really, making fun of Kurt saying that they had he had forgotten about his son Jason Jordan for all those years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was weird. <clears throat> they they had a lead up to it, but I don't remember. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. What it's it not that important. Um, then we got backstage locker room with uh, Dallas and Axel trying yeah. to plead to Seth. This was good. They, they need a new leader, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, they both had jackets on and ripped them off to re- reveal uh, Monday Night Rollins shirts. Yeah. And they, what did they say? Br- uh, burn it down, right? Probably. I yeah. think. And then they tried to do the shield uh, yeah. fist in the middle. But and so it's like, nope, no, not going to happen. That's going to be a hard no from me. Yep. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so Good stuff. Apparently, the Miz Taraj is lost without the Miz. Who <clears> would have <throat> thought it? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then we had uh, Titus Worldwide versus... Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that happened. The result was exactly as we expected. Drew McIntyre is a very scary-looking man. He is. Um, and, uh, yeah. He, they, they hit did, that uh, Claymore, Claymore into zigzag. the zigzag. Yeah, yeah it's a nice Apollo finish. again. Well, you know. Um, you got to protect Titus. Sure. <laughs> but, yeah, no, McIntyre cut... Uh, actually... Both cut a promo, but Dolph, you could just—you didn't even have to listen to it. Yeah, McIntyre's was definitely a lot mm-hmm. better. Um, yeah. But yeah, basically, he says that I'm not the superstar that the WWE wants. Mm-hmm. I am the superstar that they need. Yes, and he says gonna, the locker room's gone so often that he's uh, going to basically uh, be the wake-up call that WWE needs. Mm-hmm. But so, which is good. Strong promo. Well, hopefully, they'll actually do something with him. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, I just don't, you know. I mean that the top of the card is very packed as it is, mm-hmm. so it's true. But even if they keep him like a strong upper mid Carter, yeah, have him in this Braun Strowman esque role mm-hmm. where he can be slotted in to stuff, or eventually just have them run over the tag team division like well, that's true. Did. Yeah, also possible. Yeah, since we have been getting a lot of uh, put together teams, mm-hmm. so which is funny because we are talking about this probably some point last year where they don't really don't do have, that yeah anymore. yeah exactly now it's all the time <laughs> yeah um, um let me go backstage and kurt angle is talking with uh his Chad real Gable. son yes oh my god they, they do look, look so exactly much alike, alike. <laughs> exactly like, alike. oh my god why couldn't you guys just go with this but whatever they had to be uh i guess funny in, i guess in yeah. mind where yeah 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 let's the, do that one no, yeah. no, no, no. So. um but yeah, no, I think uh, Kurt said, oh, I'm not going to put you and Jason Jordan together. This You're going to be on your own yeah, and you're single. Gable's like, good, I don't want that yeah. loser. And then uh, Jinder walks up and he's yelling about his demands and how he lost his title last yeah. week and it's all Kurt's fault. Yep. And then uh, Jinder realizes that, uh, or, or he says that Chad Gable uh, is the, what, the grown-up version of uh, Nicholas or something like that? Yes. Or he said, uh, yeah, cause you've grown so much yeah. since your uh, tag team title win at WrestleMania. Yeah. And then, yeah. It's not nice to call people short like yeah. that. And then it, well, you made a mini-me joke, which is, yeah. that was a little uh, too soon, but you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, he, uh, Chad Gable's a very good wrestler, though. He is. Jinder is not a very good wrestler. Yeah, it wasn't a very good match. <laughs> um... But yeah, obviously, Angle makes a match between the two of them. Yep. That goes on next. Yeah. Um. So, I thought Jinder was going to go over. So, nah. I'm glad that he didn't. Nah. Because, yeah. well, I just figured going into the title match at the Royal Rumble, they kind of would want to keep his momentum. What but, momentum? That was on SmackDown. Raw? No momentum. All right. Well, like I said, I'm happy they didn't have him win. So, it's good. Um, well... So what was it? Uh, well, Jinder, Jinder attacked him from yeah, behind before the match started. Before the match, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he pretty much actually controlled the entire match. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Gable is able to attack his knee or whatever. Yep. Um, and then uh, Jinder is able to overpower him again, 
and then what was it? I think he pretty much rolled them up in a quick, quick pinfall. Okay, yeah. They do that a lot lately. Yeah. With the roll-ups. Yeah. Oh, he went for the Colossus, and I guess he went through his legs and rolled them up or yeah, something like that. Yeah, probably something like that. So uh, Gable wins. Yeah. And it's good. That, yeah, that should All be good. All is he right sh- in the world. He should be beating up the lower mid card. He should. Like, he should be. They, they should push him, too. He's very good. I mean, eventually we're going to get that Jason Jordan versus Chad Gable match. But that would be a good match, though. So mm. it's kind of... Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's hard to complain about that. Mm. So, just, but, I mean, I'm sure that's what they will be building to until Jason Jordan comes back. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, up next, we have Renee Young interviewing the Riot Squad. This wasn't good. Um, it they, just felt so scripted. Like, it's like, oh, all right, yeah. you're going to say this uh-huh. piece. You're going to say this. You're going to say this. All three of them it. had their own little segments yep. that they needed to say. And it. then they're putting the rest of the roster on, on notice. Watcher, yeah. We'll be sneaking in the shadows, right? Is that yeah, something so, stupid yeah. like that? Apparently, Sarah <laughs> Logan was a hunter, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was nonsense. Um, up next, we have Samoa Joe doing a phone promo. Yeah. We got that on both shows, right? We did. And he said <laughs> the same exact thing both times? Yeah. I didn't pay attention to either one. Oh, no. It's not important. Yeah. But, yeah, it's the same old nonsense. I'm going to beat Roman Reigns. I'm going to take the Universal title if mm-hmm. he managed to beat Brock Lesnar. Yeah. <laughs> did he mention it. anything about the ladder match? Uh, I think he said that he's bringing the, bringing IC, the IC titles to, to SmackDown. SmackDown. Yeah. Um, and then we have Dallas and Axel at it again, mm-hmm. but this time they're trying to uh, coerce Finn to take them under yep. his wing. Trying to two sweet him. <laughs> yep. And Finn just puts their hands well, down and yeah. leaves. Yes, and he and they're wearing this time they're wearing the uh, Ballot uh, Club, right? Yeah, the OG BC. Oh yeah, that's right, right, right. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. It, it it is entertaining, and obviously I'm assuming they're leading to something, um, but. Yeah, or it could just be killing time because Seth and Finn can't really do anything until, until after, after the ladder match. Yeah, well, yeah, and so, they're and, and then right after that's backlash. So yeah, it's just very, very weird because they're trying to treat the greatest Royal Rumble as a big thing, mm-hmm. and then you have a pay per view a week later. Yep. So and it's, it's just be. very. Mm-hmm. It, it's because it's that poor time like after was it Rumble and we had like Fastlane two weeks later or something like that last year was it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was very close. Or um, whenever they do that with pay-per-views. Or like Survivor Series and uh, the pay-per-view in December was like the first week in December. They, they did that last Best year. Last year, yeah. This year they did it better where there was only the one pay-per-view in December. Right, right. It was just the SmackDown one, I think, towards the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, <sighs> they shouldn't have had so many matches established for Backlash before going into this or at least spread well, out the you two you write them. yourself into a corner I mean yeah. that's, like, that's oh, really what it is this is the match we want to have but yeah. that conflicts with the matches that we're doing and, yeah this. and you had the Superstar shakeup take place before it yeah, so, so you're so like well, that guy's on a different place. show yeah. are these two titles going to swap with each other but then he's got this match then mm-hmm. it's just like it's alright yeah a little bit whatever a little bit yeah uh, now we have Owens and Zayn versus Braun and Lashley the match that mm-hmm. was set up earlier yep um mm-hmm. Kevin and and Sammy are actually able to isolate uh, Bobby Lashley. Oh, yeah. Bobby finally gets the hot tag, and Braun Strowman absolutely destroys. Oh my God! Running after Kevin Owens on the outside, mm-hmm. just swatting yep. him away like a fly. That was fantastic. Yeah, and then Sammy Zayn was trying to run up the ramp, and just, Bobby just, just catches the, him. Yeah, the audience just get these hands just constantly. Mm-hmm. It's it's they have something there. And oh yeah, absolutely. I, I don't necessarily s- say that's their backup plan, but they're eventually going to have to go with that. That's true. Well, you know, they're not going to go with Rusev Day. So No. No. <laughs> so dumb. Bury me softly, brother. So that was really funny. Um, oh, so I saw pictures, I think it was today, uh-huh. of the wrestlers landing in Saudi Arabia. Uh-huh. And Braun Strowman had a shirt on that said, Brother Me Softly. <laughs> it was fantastic. I, I was like, is that a real shirt? And I looked it up and I couldn't find anything on it. So I don't know if maybe somebody photoshopped it on there or I something. Don't know. But it was classic. Yeah. Um <clears throat> anyway. Yep. Obvious like was did that match <clears throat> even come to an end or did they get it like a count out or something? No, I thought Oh Braun probably Braun came in one yeah. power slam. So. Yeah, he hit the power slam I think on Sammy. Yeah. Um and then up next we have No Way Jose taking on Baron Corbin, or at least yeah. that's what I thought. Yep. Um, so Jose comes out with his big old conga line <clears throat> and then, uh, they're dancing in the ring yep. and then Corbin comes out. He's like, I'm supposed to have a match with you. Well, that's <laughs> not going to happen. 
because all your conga line people, they're, you're just waiting to jump me. That's it. So this isn't going to happen yep. in any leaves. So then they dance. They mm-hmm. do their little conga line back up the entrance ramp yep. to the back. Jose's at the end, right? Yeah, because he's leading everyone to yep. the back. And Corbin attacks him from behind. And for some reason, Jose turned to face the crowd. That was yeah. dumb. Why did he do that? He should have just kept it going to the back. Nah. Oh, well. Whatever. But yeah, he gets dem- demolished by Corbin. Yep. Not a surprise. Nope. So that's going to be something that happens. Oh, Three yeah. show backlash. I guess. Mm-hmm. That would make sense, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know of anything else that's going on that would... But th- there's so much... There's so many it's question a, marks. Yeah, because well, that and it's the co brand pay per view. There's so many matches yeah. that need to happen. That's true. So I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Because we don't have a Raw Women's Title match, right? Set for or is, uh, the no, Alexa it, gets a rematch. It's right? Alexa okay. versus uh, yeah. Maya. Oh yeah, we got that gem up next. Yep. Um. So we get a moment of bliss, right? Yes. See, this. If this was the first of the bullying stuff. It, it would have been. It would have been a lot better, because she. Well, obviously she started the bullying. Right. And that's where it came from. But if they go into this match kind of like neutral, mm-hmm. and then after losing, she starts the bullying stuff. Right. That would make a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. she's actually like. Yeah. Legitimate, whereas opposed now she's kind of like backpedaling a little bit. Oh yeah, they so, they have no idea what they're. Oh no, they doing. don't. They don't. I mean, this was. All right, so I guess Alexa and Nia, this was during the time when they were still friends, uh-huh. and uh, I guess oh, they yeah. were out to eat, right, or something like that. They were just walking down or, the street yeah, or right. something. And what, uh, Alexa was eating, like, a rice bowl or something, and she saw a homeless woman, and she was going to hand it to her, and then Naya took it out of her hands and ate it right in front of her. I was like, really? That's that's what we were writing for the women? Yeah, it's pretty And bad. then I was like, oh, wait, they're having a pay-per-view with no women in the tr- Yeah, I guess everything makes sense. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Like I said, if this was the beginning, if for, well, minus that part, yeah, obviously. But I if, didn't, I didn't hear any of the rest. I just went. But if it was like just an anti-bullying thing, the way they presented it, it was entertaining. Yeah. But the content of the presentation wasn't so great. So, but you know, whatever. It, it's just it's no create. There's no creativity with it. No, it's it's childish nonsense. Right. So, um. It's unfortunate. But Triple H, just speaking of the whole. Uh, greatest royal rumble thing with no women uh-huh. um triple h had said that in if when well, you know we can't go there and try to establish something and then have women go you know they can't mm-hmm. just automatically say oh we're not doing it yeah. and then once they get established there then they'll try to mm-hmm. be a little more progressive with oh things. yeah well you gotta remember where they're where they're going oh i know I mean? no, no no yeah so absolutely. it's not even it's not even <clears throat> like it's the wwe's choice Oh, that. no, no. I wouldn't be surprised if that was, like, the contract that they signed or something yeah. like that. Like, they couldn't. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So. Like, the arena is set up, uh, like, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you like, have, it's, like, segregated. Yeah, right? absolutely. You have, like, celebrities in one section. You have families in another. I think the single men are in another section yeah, and things so like that. It's crazy. Yeah. Especially coming from, you know, America where oh, right, right. things are a little a different. A little different. So. But, hey, you know, every, yeah. every culture has their own uh, way of doing things. It's true. Um, so yeah, up next we have Balor and Seth teaming up against Dallas and Axel. I mean, I don't know. It made sense. Oh, no, I get the reason for the match, yeah. but I mean, there's no believability that... No, because it's two jobbers up against two semi-main event yeah. wrestlers, so... Yeah. Obviously, Seth and Balor win. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember how. Doesn't matter. Don't know. Didn't really matter. Nope. Knew the outcome before it happened. Yep. Um, so... And after that, we have a locker room strategizing with the mm-hmm. face team. I believe they, at the pretty much the very beginning of the show, they announced the main event was going to be a 10 woman yeah. tag. Yeah. It was going to be Natalia, Nia Jax, Sasha, Bailey, and Ember, Ember against the Riot Alexa, Squad. Alexa, Mickey, and the Riot, Riot Squad. Squad yeah. um, but yeah, it was Natalia, mm-hmm. Sasha, Bailey. Um, Ember and Nia in the locker room, and then I think everybody except for Bailey and Sasha leave. Right. And Sasha looks look. at Bailey, 
and this time Bailey walks out Looks on Sasha. Yeah. It's such a weird dynamic that they're going with there because it's so inconsistent. That's one, the thing. It's like, one, all right, we're all in. Nope, we're pulling back. Well, because it's well, it's more of sometimes Sasha seems like she's annoyed at Bailey, mm-hmm. and then Bailey seems like she's annoyed at Sasha. And then next week they'll be in a tag team match yeah, together. Yeah, so it's just, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that brought us to the main event. A main that. event that led to something completely different. Yeah, that's Which true. Is very funny. Yeah. Um, so we have the match, obviously. Um, Natalia was kind of in control. She was doing a sharpshooter on... I, I don't remember who she was doing on. Probably a Bliss or Mickey. No, I don't... I feel like Bliss never even got in the match. It's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, it, it, it could have very well been uh, Liv or whoever. Yeah, it was one of the Riot Squad. Um, I would assume so. So, and... Uh, as she's in, oh, well, she's holding the sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. I think Mickey James is the one who did chop it. Blocks her, yeah. She comes in, chop blocks the knee. It actually looked really yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, they did a good job a good, with it. Yeah. So, the believability was there. Yeah. So she's she rolls on the outside, nursing the knee. Mm-hmm. The match continues on. She's still on the outside. She tries to get up, come back in. Mickey James, out Kicks, of nowhere, yeah. just does a baseball slide through the ropes, knocks it down again. Mm-hmm. And, then, and at this point, all the other women were on the other side of the ring, right? And Nia Jax got onto the apron and jumped onto all of them. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, Ember Moon like the, took the brunt of it. I think yeah. she was the one she hit first. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I yeah. think... Yeah, Mickey so everybody her, was out around, yeah. on the other side yeah, of so the I ring. So I think Mickey went over and hit her one more time mm-hmm. or something. Something like that. And then at that point, Ronda Rousey's music hits. She comes down. Um, and then she gets Mickey in the ring. And just immediately puts her in an arm bar, I think. Yeah, I and think she tapped yeah. out. Yeah, she tapped out, and then the bell rang. And, yeah. then, and then who said it? Somebody, one of the announcers, I thought, said uh, that she tapped out, and somebody else was like, Ron, Ron, wasn't even in the match. I think it, was, yeah. it was probably Booker saying yeah, she tapped, tapped out, out, and yeah. Cole said she wasn't even in the yeah, match. Yeah, she, yeah. They must, she, they, she must have cost them the match. Because yeah. that is technically what That's happened. That's what happened, yeah. Um, but it was funny that a ref waited until then. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it makes sense, but it was just, yeah. Mm-hmm. As Whatever. soon as she put her hands on her, it should have but been. yeah, during the course of the match, I'm thinking, why is Natalia getting the yes, focus? Right, and then I remembered that oh yeah, she was teaming with Rousey. Yep, so I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Ronda's first feud is going to be with uh, Mickey. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Have her against a, a <clears throat> veteran that she's not already associated with. Yeah, because you had said that there was rumors that it might be Natalia. Yeah, which doesn't make no. any sense. But, but you never know with Natalia, their ca- her character. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, but, it's true. Eh. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we said, nothing really to write home about on Raw, especially two weeks before a pay per view. But yeah, the, there was so Everything's much. Everything's already established. Yeah, no, I know. So, but uh, it was just a giant advertisement for the uh, greatest Royal Rumble. Well, they <laughs> did the in-show previews for it. They yeah. did that on Raw and SmackDown, mm-hmm. like they did for WrestleMania. Right. So. Oh, yeah, no, it's going to be a huge thing. Mm. Six hours, I think. It's, it's crazy. Long time. Yep. Anyway. Yep. That brings us to SmackDown. Smack diddly down. Um, before the show, they announced that Miz would have Miz TV with Daniel Bryan mm-hmm. as a special guest. Yes. And that's how the show opens. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was a good opener. Mm. Um, Miz basically talked about him being a changed man now that he has a daughter and things like that and he said that you know daniel bryan should have felt the same way when his daughter was born and that he shouldn't want to hit the miz yeah um but he said you know if if that's how it's going to be then well bring him down here and let him do it yep and that brings out big Cass. Um, well there was a long pause oh yeah yeah because nothing right yeah. yeah happened and then and then big, Cass came yeah out. and uh he had uh basically a suit he was holding his jacket yeah it was weird that he was getting the, dressed. well it made sense following the segment oh that yeah followed i guess that's it. true yeah, so yeah. he's putting on his watch put on his jacket came to the ring and uh we realized what he was doing when he was hurt he was taking promo classes yeah he uh he seemed a lot more comfortable the, the confidence yeah i mean night and day we you gotta remember you they must have known that when he came back he did oh yeah he wouldn't have enzo to carry him yeah. so because even before enzo you know got mm-hmm. fired or whatever he uh he wasn't going to be right again with but him, so here's the big thing what Cass had a reason to be out there he had a reason to say all these things he had a reason to be mad at daniel bryan so to speak well yeah because he had I, said that uh the two of them got cleared yeah. at the same time yeah. but daniel bryan hogged all the spotlight yep. what and, about me what about raven um 
No, I mean, it's just, it was so, it was good. It yeah. made sense. It was a it, story that made sense. Right, because, absolutely. Because last week, when Cass attacked Daniel Bryan at the mm, end of the table, like, we well, didn't know why. No, yeah. It didn't make any sense. Um, But, you know, Cass said that when he was younger, he was a small guy like Daniel Bryan, and, and Daniel Bryan bullied, should be I my think. garbage man or something like that. I don't want to watch yeah, TV. because he's an average right, show-looking yeah. guy. Which I get. It makes sense. He yeah. Heal with good points. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what, him and The Miz kind of got into it, right? Yeah. At that point, it kind of seemed like they were making Cass a face there. It was weird, but, I mean, I think I ultimately know what they're probably going to end up doing, is that Cass is going to be the Mrs. Bodyguard or something in that fashion. That would make sense. The suit and everything. Tag together and stuff like that. And I like that role for Cass because uh, makes sense. You're, he's in the shadow of somebody who's, you know, a big heel for the company. Well, with, and, with that, Miz is also more legitimate. Right, and this will probably give Miz a face turn eventually. That's true have him and Cass go against each other. But Down usually the, the way it would work is the bodyguard would turn face. Yeah, no, of. it's true, but I don't know if they're... Either know. way. It yeah, doesn't it matter. doesn't matter yeah. how they're going to do it. Yeah, it, it could be completely wrong, and, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after Cass leaves, they cut to backstage mm-hmm. where... Um, well, we see I think it's Becky and Becky, Asuka yeah. walking down the hallway, and then all of a sudden they notice... They, uh, Daniel Bryan writhing in pain on yes. the floor, being attended to by a referee. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like you said, we know what Cass was doing before he came yep. out. Which they never mentioned anything until later on in the nope. show. But I think it was supposed to be, like, kind of teach by showing. Right. Time. No, 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 I got it. I got so. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yep. So uh, up next we have the Iconics. Uh, was it Billy Kay and Paint Royce? They yes. come out. Um they make fun of Becky and Asuka. Mm-hmm. Do um, what they do best. Horrible Irish impressions from the Australians. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, they're sticking with their thing. That's it. Um, being bullies and whatnot. You know, the opposite of what Alexa Bliss wants. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it kind of works with the, with the way they do it. Yeah, absolutely. They're entertaining with yeah. it at the very least. It's more catty rather than, or not I don't know. Well, it, yeah, it it's works. Lighter. It's lighter. Yeah, I guess it's so. It's lighter. Yeah, because like Charlotte was just cracking up last week when well, they were doing laughing. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, after a little while, Becky and Oscar come out for their match. Mm-hmm. To, they have a tag team match together. Surprisingly, the Iconics actually win. Well, they needed to pick up this victory here. Yes, but at the same time, you kind of—it's hard to take them seriously. Yeah. Yeah, they're not meant. It's not meant to be a serious character. But I get, I get what you're saying yeah. because. I mean, they just had Asuka with this giant streak. Yep. Almost took down the champion, and then she's losing. I mean, she didn't get pinned, yeah, but she still did. counts as yeah. an L. It's true. She took the L. Um, but yeah, Peyton pins Becky using the ropes, mm-hmm. obviously for leverage. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was that. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. That was that. Um, and then we go backstage, and I guess Renee is interviewing. AJ, after he comes out of Shane McMahon's office, and I guess he says he's going to face Shinsuke and Rusev Day, right? Yeah, and she goes, you're going to face, face them, them by yourself? yourself? And he's like, no, I got backup, and it's going to be too sweet. Yep. And we were like, oh, man. I knew what that meant. Yep. We all knew what that meant. Yep. Good brothers getting back together. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we got uh, another video package for Andrade Cien Almas. Yeah, I guess they don't have anything for him yet. No. So. <laughs> nope. Because then we got it for Sanity later on in the night. We did? We got a, Yeah, there was a I video for that. Sanity. I missed yeah. that. So, I but they actually... I, I don't remember. Because they showed two of them last week, right? For Sanity? Yeah. yeah. One was Chaos coming, and the other one they actually yeah, had their faces dumb. and stuff like that. That was dumb. It yeah. made no sense. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. So uh, up next we have uh, the Usos backstage. Mm-hmm. Uh, Naomi comes over, and she, <laughs> Jimmy goes... Make sure you don't come, come out, out during your match yeah. again. I looked at Luke and uh, Rowan, and uh, they had, or what did she There's say? Nothing There's nothing in but their in their eyes. eyes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know why, but they mm-hmm. seem to be completely just, like, destroying Naomi's character here. Because, like, I guess, theoretically, she's trying to, like, she's trying to stand up for her man and, <laughs> that kind of nonsense and that's what she's doing i know, I know. but it completely just t- well, we takes have, her out of the women's like I division said, we have an a storyline and we have a b storyline 
No, it's, this would be the C. Story. No, I know, I know. That's oh, why okay. there's no room for a C storyline. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got absolutely. you. I got you, got you, got you. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, while it makes sense, there's, like, real-life story mm-hmm. kind of going on there, so it, it works. Oh, you know. But she just won something that they made out to be a big deal. You think they would do something. Yeah, who won the men's one? He's going he's gonna to be a tag team champion. It's true, but there's no reference to him winning. That doesn't matter. I guess he, they're still doing something with him. I, that's true, but they were doing something with him before that. You don't know that. Okay. You don't. I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying only because he won the battle royal is why he is going to be a tag team champion? Well, you know, it's set up the tag team. I guess that's true. I know. It, it was so. the way they put it together, so I, I will give so. you that. But Naomi, she's. Yeah, we got nothing. Yep, yep, yep. Got nothing. All right, so up next we have Eric Rowan against Jimmy Uso. Yes. Um, Um, So this, I I, kind of did like what they did. I like it. No, no, it was good. It made sense. Yeah. So Rowan obviously is destroying Jimmy for most of the match. Mm -hmm. Lights go out. Well, Harper, yeah, it was beating up Jay on the outside. Yeah, I was going to say, they were chasing each other around. Lights go out. Naomi comes out, does her full entrance. Yep. And in the distraction, because of... Apparently, Rowan's never seen a girl yeah. before. Well, both of them were staring at <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. Jimmy's able to... Uh, yeah, because Jay, we saw Jay super kick Luke, mm-hmm. and he went down, and then we all of a sudden go back to the ring, and then that's when Jimmy, I guess he kicked Harper and then rolled him up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Jimmy actually pulled off a win. Yeah. Which makes sense, because now they're even going into the... The match at yeah. uh, the Royal Rumble. Yeah, which I would assume the Bludgeon Brothers will hold, keep the titles. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Up next, we have the contract signing between Carmella and Charlie. She's so inconsistent with the whole contract signings. It's just like... It's all nonsense. Yeah, it's all nonsense. This was unnecessary, but I like Carmella's promo was good. I like how they made uh, Renee sit in the ring the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. no reason now because carmel comes out and cuts a promo saying that well if i beat charlotte and charlotte beat oscar that means i'm better than oscar yep and uh and then she says you know what let's let's play a video of my greatest uh, moments well she said that you guys didn't appreciate it last week so oh this right. week you're gonna appreciate yeah. it so they play it or she plays it and then the crowd's booing afterward and she's like all right we're gonna do this again when we get to the end, you're all going to be clapping and or happy or whatever. Standing, the hell. Standing and cheering. And, that's it. And then uh, we get like halfway through the video again, and then Charlotte's music finally comes. Well, they like kept show... panning to the Titan Tron. Yeah, they, and, they show yeah. the ring, they show the Titan Tron, and then Charlotte's music hits. She comes down. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what was it? Well, Charlotte went and sat down, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, Carmella yeah. was just being herself, yeah, and then Renee holding... started yelling at her, sit down, act professional. Yeah. Um, then Charlotte signs the contract. Carmella, for some reason, shoves, shoves the, the title in her face. Charlotte grabs her by the head and just... Well, she grabs the hat, and she went to pull her down to smack her head on it, but she pulled the hat down, and then Carmella sold it. It yeah. was funny. So she, like, flipped over the table. Mm-hmm. It was... Because I was, like, half paying attention at this point in time, and all of a sudden I just saw Carmella underneath the table. I thought that she went to attack her or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they showed the replay a little later on. I'm like, oh, that is not what I thought happened. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. What happened. Mm-hmm. So we go backstage, and uh, I guess Dasha is going to get an interview with Shinsuke. She was going up to his locker room. Yes. And what, Aiden English, go, was he going in, or he opened no, he the door? he opened the door. Yeah, and when we say uh, uh, we're strategizing or something like no, that. No, you just said no interviews. No interviews? Yeah. All right, so I got a question for you. Sure. How are they talking if Shinsuke doesn't speak English? Um, well, he speaks Bulgarian, and, Eng- and Aiden English had to learn Bulgarian mm. because he's the advocate for Rusev Day. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> or. So who understands or Japanese? He is lying. <laughs> And he doesn't actually not speak English. Okay. I'm thinking it might be that one. I don't know. They sold me on it. Two weeks in a row, he said it. He's very he's very uh, convincing, mm-hmm. at the very least. Anyway, uh, so they, uh, they they swerved this again. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this time it was just I don't know. Last it, time at least it worked. This time it was like it, okay, it, why is it didn't make as much sense? Yeah, because we were gonna get a rematch from last week with Shelton Benjamin and Jeff Hardy. Yes, because Shelton's already Sh- in the ring. Mm-hmm. And we see Jeff come out. Yeah, he gets halfway down the ramp, and then he starts to move over to the side. And there's but like there's a couple a, second delay. And then all of a sudden, Randy Orton's music, and he's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, and then I think it was probably Byron or Tom trying mm-hmm. to sell it off. It's like, oh, well, he must have felt it coming. Yeah. Or something stupid like that. It was like the voices that. in his head. Yeah, it was, it was actually Kevin Dunn with the Miss, yeah. Miss Q. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, so, again, we got another rematch from the... Uh, Mid two thousands. Well, yeah, it's true. <laughs> oh, actually, is that true? Probably. Did Brandon Orton fil- face Shelton Benjamin? I, I guess. Assume I so. guess. Yeah, that would make sense. They probably faced uh, each other for the U.S. title. Oh no, no Orton never had yeah, the U.S. title. It, That's right. Intercontinental is believable. That might be it. Um. Anyway. Mm-hmm. So, Jeff Jeff sitting by the announcers table. Mm-hmm. Um. And then Randy brings Shelton outside, and Jeff's like, "I don't want to get involved with yep. nothing." Doesn't clear the table. Drops yeah. him on the. <laughs> Damn um, Orton. Anyway, so uh, Randy gets Shelton back in the ring, and then out of nowhere, oh, apparently Jeff has a knee injury. That kind oh, of, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what they had said. Mm-hmm. His knee was wrapped up or whatever. I got gotcha. you. Um, and then uh, a masked man comes out of the crowd and yeah. hits Jeff in the leg, and then runs away. <laughs> and Orton grabs him, throws him in the ring, rips his mask off. Yeah. It's it's Sunil Singh. Yeah. <gasps> Surprise! I know. Um, honestly, I thought it was Almas at first. No, uh-huh. uh-huh. it kind of would have made been sense. Cool, yeah. yeah, you know, he wears masks right. normally. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe later on. What? It'll work. Oh, yeah, because yeah. right now it's just like, why would you throw that wrench in the works? Yeah, I guess it's true. You already have too many moving parts. Yeah. So anyway, uh-huh. uh, Sunil gets an RKO, yep. and in the distraction, Shelton hits pay dirt mm-hmm. on uh, Randy Orton. Did not look very pretty. No, and then. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Shelton actually picks up the win. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, pretty much useless. More old win men for, fighting again. Yeah. Useless win for Shelton, but whatever. Yeah, whatever. He got a win. More than what Jinder got. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have the New Day celebrating the launch of the Book of Booty. Yeah. I didn't know this was a thing. I did not either. Um, they and, had wine glasses filled with bootios, yeah. and they were eating pancakes. Yep. Of course. So yep. What else would you do on? And then the. Bu- what else would you do on Rusev every day? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and then the bar came over, and uh, they went back and forth for a little bit, and then they did their whole "We are the bar." And when they put their thumbs together, Biggie was like, "Oh, that's so inappropriate and uh, <laughs> disgusting," or whatever he said. And I was like, "I never would have put it that way." Yep, yep, yep. Uh, whatever. We'll leave it to the new day. Oh yeah, they're very good at the sexual innuendo. Yes. Uh, up next, we have AJ and the club mm-hmm. embracing over their teaming together. Yes. Uh, apparently, they're very excited to to be back. They were. Yet again, mm-hmm. for, for the first time since yep. 2016. And Kevin Dunn was so excited that he started playing the uh, SmackDown music before they uh, finished Two Sweeting. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. It's like, oh, he, he's at it again. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. And then we find out that Big Cass is the one that attacked Daniel Bryan as mm-hmm. he was interviewed, and he said he wants his payback. And challenges to him to a match at Backlash. Yeah, Daniel Bryan is not afraid of anyone no. big or small. No, it's going to be an interesting match to say the least. Um, well, it depends on. Well, no, it should be fine. I, yeah. I think Daniel Bryan's dealt with big people. No, I know. It's just I don't. We didn't really get to see much of Cass outside of. I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, I'm not yeah, saying I, he's not. It's Bryan's just... going to. No, carry he'll carry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. I think he can make. Uh, cast look fantastic so. yeah so it, it, it should be always a possibility yeah um we got the we got another samoa joe promo mm-hmm. same same stuff not even worth going over yep um and then we have the club versus shinsuke nakamura and rusev day yep uh, the club including aj styles mm-hmm. um we get a you know, standard tag team match it was like with 15 minutes from from when the match oh well, we got end. yeah it was i don't even know if it was that long so we got the commercial break yeah, so then we got the was, entrances. Yeah, club so clears like the ring. Twelve or so. They're all two sweeting in the ring. Then we go to commercial break again. Yeah, come back, and they get a couple minutes here and there. Um, Duchinsky. Oh no, no, he. Uh, yeah, he got the win hitting Luke Gallows. Surprisingly, yes. mm-hmm. not the eater of pins, Carl Anderson. It's true, but 
Anderson didn't have a, a fun time after he the match. He did not. So uh, after, as soon as uh, Shinsuke pins Gallows, mm-hmm. AJ jumps in the ring, starts attacking um, Shinsuke. Shinsuke. Um, and then Shinsuke hits him with a low blow, gets him to the corner, goes for a Kinshasa, and then Carl Anderson like just jumps in the way and gets hit with the Kinshasa <laughs> instead. Um, yep. And, and then, then Carl yeah. Anderson, uh, AJ is trying to get his self back together mm-hmm. and shinsuke goes to hit carl anderson with the kinshasa and aj is too slow and doesn't get in the way because he looked like he was going over to yeah. stop him yeah but he was unsuccessful yep and so carl anderson took two kinshasas yep i guess that's worse than a pin uh it's true yeah i'm sure it was much more potentially dangerous oh yeah <laughs> yeah the crazy yeah. crazy japanese man yeah so I yeah i mean yeah smackdown was it wasn't bad yeah it was it was compact and somewhat eventful. Yeah. So um, it wasn't the, like, drawn-out, stilted nonsense that we're, it mm-hmm. used to be. So. Yeah, and, I mean, they've cut down the roster tremendously with dead weight on SmackDown. Oh, absolutely, yeah. The, the, the people who are there are, like, Pretty actually much. productive yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. Um, yeah, the only people that really weren't there besides Ty Dillinger, which we aren't surprised about. Yeah. Um, you know, sanity coming in. And yeah, but they still need to do. Yeah, I think that's going to be a post backlash thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and we're gonna get that. Yeah, they'll probably go at it with the new day or something like that. Mm. Or, um, I guess that would make sense. And then down the line, they'll go after the Bludgeon Brothers and probably take the belts off yeah, them because the only, they're a good transition team because you yeah. have that third person. But the only problem is like, what are the bar gonna do if sanity goes after the new day? You know, they're gonna mean? go to Raw when they win the titles. It's not going to happen. Okay. And what if it does? They made such a big deal about not wanting to be on Raw anymore. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they get into the ring and lay down for Matt and Bray. <laughs> that's more likely than them winning and hmm. going back to Raw. I guess that's true. So, at least that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Fair so, enough. So, Whatever. Yeah. I guess we'll see on Friday. It's true. The Great Destroyer Rumble. At 12 noon. Yes. Eastern. Mm-hmm. And that's Nine it. Nine Pacific. Yes. And the pre-show starts at 11 or 8 Pacific. Very good. And whatever. I'm you tired. know your time zones. I'm tired. I'm done. All right. I've had enough. Fine. So. I guess that's how we'll end it. Yep. And uh, that was our WWE Week in Review. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.